Okay, tell me what makes a good smartphone in 2023? Hang on, let me ask Team TW. Okay, what is the most important feature for you in a decent smartphone? Mm, good camera? Obviously, two to three years of software mm. update. Uh, CPU. Performance is the uh, 120 hz AMOLED display. Now, if you want most of these features in a single phone, then as of 2023, you will have to pay around 25 to 30,000. Which creates a lot of confusion because you have new phones from Tecno, Realme, Samsung, Vivo. Almost every smartphone company has a phone under 30,000. And not just that, even premium phones like Google Pixel 6a and Nothing Phone 1 have had a price cut and are now available under 30,000. So this price segment is overpopulated with choices and more choices is equal to more confusion. Well, worry not. We are here to make things simple for you guys because we have used many phones in this price and we'll tell you which is the best phone to get. So stick around till the end of the video. Let's freaking go. Now, before we begin, two things to mention. Number one, we have personally used all these phones. So I'll tell you pros and cons from a more practical day-to-day -day use angle. Second, to make things simple for you guys, we'll be ranking the phones in the tier system. It's back boys. You have GOAT, greatest of all time, just buy it. Very solid, the phone which is good in all aspects but average in one. Did the job, good in one aspect but average in others. Finally, you know it, I know it tier, avoid, avoid these phones. So with that out of the way, the first phone that we have in the list is Samsung F54. Now there are three good things about this phone. Number one is the software, like this comes with Android 13 and Samsung is promising four years of Android updates and five years of security update. So in simple words, basically this will get Android versions till 2027. That is the maximum for any phone in this entire list. Also this has some extra software features like you can do call recording without the announcement or my favorite, Samsung wallet. So you can add credit card here and other details and you can just use your phone for tap and pay. Second would be the camera. We took these shots from the phone and they look really good. The skin tone, background blur, HDR and all is above average. But the biggest pro for Samsung M54 would be the massive battery. Like this is the only phone in this list with a whopping 6000 mAh battery. So you can easily get more than one day of battery life even on heavy usage. Sometimes even two days on medium to light uses. However, the charging speed is a bit slow. It can do maximum 25 watts. So it will take around two hours or so to get it charged to 100%. Also, the Samsung F54 comes with Exynos 1380 processor which is fine for normal day-to-day -day use but you may struggle with demanding games like in BGMI you can only do maximum 30 FPS so if you want a phone for gaming then I would not recommend this and the biggest concern with the F54 is the speaker this is the only phone in this list that has one single speaker so overall if your priority is bigger battery because you stay outside the house on 5G all the time and especially if you need a Samsung phone for one UI, you can consider the F54. I'll put the Samsung F54 in did the job tier. Up next, we have the OnePlus Nord 3 and this is a very interesting phone. Like, I really like the design of the phone. It is like a perfect mix of boxy and curved design. I mean, the in-hand feel of the phone is really nice. However, I'll put this phone in did the job tier because two reasons. Firstly, is camera performance. Like side by side with OnePlus's own OnePlus 11R, see the pictures of the 11R are more details, better clarity. But the biggest concern with Nord 3 is the launch price. If you go on Amazon, it is selling for 33 triple nine rupees. That is too expensive for this phone because you can pay a little extra and get a better OnePlus phone, the OnePlus 11R. So yeah, just because of the pricing, I'll put the Nord 3 in the did the job tier. Like if you're on a strict budget and you really, really want a OnePlus phone, then the Nord 3 is the only option. Also, if you can get the Nord 3 around 30,000, still recommend it. Next up, we have Google Pixel 6a. So this phone launched last year for 44,000 rupees, but presently it is available for 27,000 rupees on Flipkart. That's like a 40% price cut. And at that price, the Google Pixel 6a has some really good features. First is the software. Like there is no bloatware, no ads, nothing. You'll get Android updates first on this phone up until Android 15. Plus the animations are smoother. So even at 60 Hertz refresh rate, the phone doesn't feel laggy or anything. Second is the design. Like this camera visor on the back is very unique. No other brand does this by the white color. And last but not the least is the camera. We took a few pictures and I would say the Pixel phones have the best human photos, like the skin tone, background blur and everything is pretty solid. The only con with this phone is the Tensor chip. So if you use mobile data or 5G, at times the phone gets hot. And this is an issue with the Tensor chips in general because even the Google Pixel 7a also had the same heating issue. But overall, if you want a good camera phone, good software experience, compact phone, you can consider the Google Pixel 6a. It's just because of that tensor heating issue. 
I'll put the Google Pixel 6a in the very solid tier. Up next, we have the most hyped phone from last year, the Nothing Phone 1. The Nothing Phone 1 right now is selling around 29999 and at that price, it is a really good phone. Firstly, the design of this phone is pretty solid. I mean, just have a look at it. This glyph interface on the back makes the phone look very unique. It's not only aesthetic, but it is also functional. Like you can just flip the phone like this and it goes to DND mode. Plus, this is one of the few phones in this price that can do wireless plus reverse wireless charging. It's a good to have premium feature. Besides this, the Nothing OS is pretty well optimized. My favorite is this. I can have a larger folder size for the frequently used app. Also, of all the phones that I have used, Nothing OS stands out. Like this dotted font and all of it. Like overall, the entire phone is very unique. The only thing that is average with the Nothing Phone 1 is the camera because the camera is inconsistent. Like seven out of 10 times, it will take really good pictures. And those three times, it misses the shot. Especially in HDR or night shots, pictures are average at best. But credit where due, Nothing has given many software updates and have improved the camera quite a lot since launch. Now, a big concern with Nothing Phone is also the service center because it is a very new brand. So we did visit Nothing Service Center here in Noida and our experience was good. But if you are from a smaller city, it could be a problem. We have done a full video on top five service center in India. You can go check out that video over here after watching this one. So yeah, if you want a phone that looks really unique, has a good software experience, then you can consider the Nothing Phone 1 because under 30K, this is actually a really good value for money phone. So I'll put it in the very solid tier. Up next, we have the Motorola Edge 40 and this is the only phone in this list with a curved display. Now, I know getting screen protector for a curved display is difficult and a lot of you may not like it, but it does make the phone look and feel more premium than other phones. Second pro is the software experience. So there is no bloatware or ads or anything in this phone. Plus you get additional software features, like my favorite is this pin pad scrambler. So every time you unlock the phone, it shuffles the position of the number. So little bit extra security. Motorola has many such software features. We have done a dedicated video on it. You can go and check that out here. Here. However, even after all these pros, I will not put this in the GOAT category because the camera is average. Like see the picture that we took, the skin tone is pretty off. Plus if you zoom in a little, see it is soft. However, this can be fixed with a software update or what the tech bros say, use Gcam. Well, you can do that with every phone, but we judge it on what it comes out of the box. Plus, the second biggest concern I have with this phone is, see, Motorola doesn't have a good history of giving timely software updates. Like the Motorola S30 from last year only started receiving Android 13 a month back or so. That is like nearly one year late. That being said, this is actually a good phone. If you want a phone with curved display, extra software features, clean UI, connect to PC and all that features, the Motorola H40 is a fine choice. Let's put this in very solid tier. It's just if the camera was good, it would have been good. Next up, we have the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. Presently, it is selling for around 3499 on Amazon, but with bank offers and all of that, you could get this for around 30,000 rupees. And the biggest pro of this phone at this price is the performance. So the iQOO Neo 7 Pro comes with Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, plus there is an additional chip for heavy gaming. Now, we cannot show you gaming here, else the video will become too big, but have a look at this. So we ran N22 Benchmark and it scored like 12 lakh 95,000, which is even higher than the S23 Ultra. Higher than the S23 Ultra. So if you are into gaming, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro is a solid option. Besides this, the camera is also good. Like we clicked quite a few pictures with this, the skin tone, HDR and all are pretty nice. Even if you zoom in, the pictures have enough details. Or uh, even in portrait mode, the shots are good. Also, this is the only phone in this list that can charge at a whopping 120 watt. So it can charge to 50% in just 10 minutes and full 100% in around 30 minutes. Plus you get the charger included with the phone. The only concern with the iQOO Neo 7 Pro is the software. Like this is running on Vivo's Funtouch OS and there are quite a few bloatwares here and there. But other than this, the phone is really good. Like if you are into gaming, then the iQOO Neo 7 Pro is the way to go. Besides this, the camera and all is also pretty solid. This phone ticks almost all the boxes if you ignore the bloatware part. So finally, we'll put the iQOO Neo 7 Pro in the goat tier. Like, first phone of 2023 in that. So yeah, that was the list. To answer your question, which is the best phone at 30,000? Well, I would say the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. It has the best gaming performance, battery life and charging is really good. Even the cameras are good. So in 2023, there are a very few times when a phone is actually priced right and offers really good value. You can argue that the fun touch OS and all of that, but you will get used to it. There aren't any major bugs in the phone. On that note, this is signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, 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 pew.